Hello, my fellow music lovers. I'm Alison Hagendorf, and welcome to the show. This is where we celebrate the universal love of music and the rock and roll spirit that lives in each of us. My guest today is Tash Sultana. Tash creates, composes, writes, engineers, and produces everything that is heard live and on record. Tash is the band. From busking the streets of Melbourne to releasing platinum records, accumulating billions of streams, selling hundreds of thousands of tickets worldwide, Tash is a one-of-a-kind force. We talk all about their DIY attitude and work ethic, the craft of not caring what people think, how a viral success can be both a blessing and a burden, and the new era of music and endeavors for Tash. And stay tuned after the interview for my sound advice. New music you need to know. It all starts now. Tash, I just want to say that it's been now a couple of years since we've seen each other. It has. And you look amazing. Thank you. You really do. Thanks. Like, your eyes look bright. You just look, you look comfortable in your own skin. Thanks. And, and so how are you feeling now? Well, I'm obviously not pregnant. So <laughs> that's, that's one. That'd be concerning if that happened. I feel good. I don't know. I think you just, I'll be 28 in a couple of months. Um I think your brain changes. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I know your brain changes, yeah. especially when you're not putting shit in it to right. stop it from functioning how it can actually function. Mm-hmm. I think for me, um, living really clean, mm-hmm. being really fit, being very mindful, as you know, you love to exercise. Mm-hmm. Like we're doing, we exercise every day, twice a day. I can't not do it. Um, and just like my team's really locked. I'm happy. My, you know, I'm. I got married. Being married, yeah. yes. My and my wife, you know, oh. she's hot as she really, really is. She's hot. She really. And is I've seen a lot of people, <laughs> and she's hot. She's objectively hot. I have done the statistics. <laughs> she's still the number one. I'm so happy for you guys. Yeah, we're happy too. Actually, um, we've been together for like seven years. Mm-hmm. She's very private. Yeah, so I won't let on too much, but um. Yeah, we got married last year on our property in Australia. So special. Our vows were exactly the same. It started out with like, sorry that I had bad body odor when we first met. (laughs) Not her, me. (laughs) (laughs) Let's get that clear. Okay. I don't smell anymore. Good. Yeah. Progress. Progress. So you probably saw me then. And I was, I'm cleaner now. Amazing. But no, I feel good. Like, it, just I'm happy, good diet, good sleep, good life. I have nothing to complain about, really. I don't. I'm just enjoying. And I've just kind of figured out because I used to live very much in like what is going to be the next, the next, the next, mm-hmm. the next, the next, the next, the next. And I just lost so much time. It's also exhausting. Yeah. To always be thinking about what's next and it robs you of the present. Yeah, and I feel like we all hear all that shit all the time about being present and mm-hmm. whatnot, but um, putting it into an actual practice is when your life really changes because like in my life there's always going to be a new single, there's always going to be another record, there's mm-hmm. always going to be show. another show, another something. So it doesn't stop. Right. You know, and, and I think that, I have really enjoyed working that out. Yeah. Because it's literally about the process. And I was talking with my engineer the other day when I was back in Australia. Like so much work goes into all the things that you do as an artist and the um, audience receives the final product. Yes. But not the journey of what of how you got it there and that's that. That's the bit there that is what should be the fuel for you to continue creating. Not for me, I'm probably never going to be a billboard number one. Might never get a Grammy nod or whatever. I used to kind of like think that that was a must mm-hmm. on my to do list, but it's not. Right. Like I think things just, I've stopped caring and things are just happening. That's powerful. Mm. That is really powerful. That's almost like a, like a superhero power to be able to do that, to let go of the things that 
are not essential and that don't serve you and to just do what makes you happy. Mm. I mean, like we were saying off yeah. camera before, we'll rehash it again. I don't do anything that I don't want to fucking do. Amen. I might sound stubborn. And I can be within reason. But it's, it's powerful. Just, it's just kind of like, why? Mm -hmm. If I don't want to go there, see that person, reply to that message, as you'll see, I showed my phone the other day in an interview, the seven and a half thousand unread emails. <laughs> if I don't want to reply, I'm not going to reply. <laughs> but I think that's what makes you, you. You know, whenever I talk about you, which is a lot, by the way. Thank you. People always ask me what music I like and what artists I think are special. And the way I describe you is a one-of-a-kind talent, a one-of-a-kind artist, and the epitome of a DIY work ethic. Thank you. I'm going to leave here with a massive head. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. And I think it's important. Well, personally, I want to know more about literally the beginning for you embracing music. Like, what was it? For, do you remember that moment where you're like, I have to make music my life? I was born. That was it. Yeah. yeah. I was born. My dad is a immigrant, came from Malta to Australia in the 70s. My mum is your typical off-the-boat white Australian, um, been there pretty much since the first fleet, literally. Um, they met, had me. They have no musical ability whatsoever. Wow. My mum, they love music. They just have no musical Just ability. as fans, they just love music. Love music. Yeah. Aww. You know, my mum's tone deaf, but she loves to sing. <laughs> That's great, the passion. Yeah. So were you, what what they what did they play, like, as you were growing up? What did you, what did you listen to? Yeah, so we always had the stereo on. Mm -hmm. And when I had, one of my earliest, earliest, earliest memories was that I used to think when you'd put on a, a record or put on the stereo, that there was a little miniature band actually inside. performing it inside. I couldn't work out how I was hearing this music. Right. So that's that's one of my earliest memories. And um, one of my earliest memories is dancing in the lounge room with my dad and my mum, you know. Well, I, d I did a um, – there's a video clip of mine called Cigarettes and it's re yes. all family footage rehashed and yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's funny, I don't watch it, I, I can still remember. I, I have a really, really good memory, like kind of almost like a photographic memory. Like I can still remember every single thing that I wore to kinder on a specific oh, day wow. when I was four years old. Or That's like impressive. Yeah. What I wore to my first day of primary school and what actually happened that day, what was in other people's lunch boxes, what, really? what cards we traded, like Pokemon cards yeah. or whatever. I can remember all of that. But when it's like from about 19 to like 20, Two, I don't remember shit. People will literally say, "Oh, it's so nice to see you. How are you going?" I'll go along with it. Well, that's because you've and met a I'll, bazillion people. I well, feel like during uh, those years. Well, it's actually because I was very unhappy. So, like when you're really depressed, yeah, um, and you're fighting that type of disease, yeah, because it's a disease. It mm -hmm. literally changes your brain, brain function. Yeah. You know, I literally can't. If if there wasn't a photo at points of uh, at, at times in my life where I've been like that, no, I, I wouldn't remember it. How did Things you come out said, of that time? Um, I it just, was a challenging time. I stopped partying, stopped drinking, yeah. stopped doing all that shit, and then just it wasn't working for me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I just changed my lifestyle around. It was because when I broke as an artist, I had all this unresolved trauma mm -hmm. that was going on at that time. As also, I don't like the word famous, mm -hmm. uh, breaking. Yes. So on the exterior to the world, I'm going like this. Right. But I was actually like that right. really bad. So it was just like parallel things happening to me. Um, yeah. I just ha I, I've had quite a few um, mental breakdowns in my mm -hmm. life where to the point where it's like psychosis. I've mm -hmm. spoken about it before. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't feel like that anymore. But there were points where, like, it was very real. Right. And it all stemmed from it, taking too many drugs when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Your brain's developing. Of course. And I'm just putting all this shit in it, 
you know, so many nights of the week. Like we'd be going out when we were kids, you know, like 15, 16, going out on a Tuesday, going to school on the Wednesday. after, And mind you, this wasn't just me. Like the environment right. that I was in at the time, we were all doing the same shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At that point in Melbourne, like 20, like 11, 2012, yeah. 2013, like that party scene was fucking crazy. Like that is the shit that you see in movies that was going on in Melbourne and we were all doing it. Do you feel so proud and grateful that's behind you? Oh, my now? God. Like, do I you can't think even about go, that all it, the time? Just like, thank God that's behind me. Thank God I have this beautiful wife and you feel good and you're feeling in control. I mean, I, uh, there's points where I wish I could go back and, and have things not happen. Mm -hmm. But then that's just a flow on effect of yeah. all of those things are where we've ended up now. So your life would not be the same as it is right now. If it wasn't for the decisions that you've made prior to the now, yeah, where they be good or bad, and look, that's why I have a really massive problem with cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Why is everyone so quick just to fucking throw someone in the bin? Right, like people change, right, and I just think you need to have some sympathy and some empathy because you know I've done some, I've done and said some shit that I. Don't even remember that I didn't said, or I do remember that I didn't said it, and I'm just like said and done, and I'm just like, oh, and you're like horrified oh, by it. That's right. so not me anymore. Right. It's the same for other people. I have time for people. Mm -hmm. I, I love think. that. Yeah, I have time for people. My um, my wife calls me have a chat. Oh, because I'll talk to anyone. That's so great. Mm. Oh, that's really beautiful. Yeah, she she's sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I no bet. places to be. I love that. Yeah. People might not realize that you play, how many instruments is it now? I don't know. You, you can't even count, right? You tell me. Because every time I do an interview, it's a different number. So well, you I tell have lost me. count, but I know it's pretty. Are there any instruments that you would like to play? Or are you kind of like, I'm good now? No, I just want to know how many you think that I play. I would say it's about 15. Yeah, see, it's a different number. Sometimes yeah. it's 30, sometimes it's 20. Wow. So, like, it's not. It's really not. I would say that I can do a rock band mm -hmm. with an orchestra, or a rock band with a brass section, horn section. That's how I would describe it. But I also really like worldly instruments like, yes. like wood. Wood. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Anything I with strings, you know, I think most people can play. If you're playing guitar, you can generally like jump over onto something else. I looked up the oud. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Mm. So I'm like, that is so interesting. It's a beautiful instrument. It is beautiful. Yeah. What inspired you to pick that one up? Like how do you decide of new like worldly instruments? I just into? really like world sounds. Right. Yeah. Like that 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 moves me. That that kind of Yeah. I wish I could tell you this thing that I'm gonna be doing at the end of the year, but I just can't. What like a hint? No, what is I, just, it? I can't, I can't. I'll tell you off camera. Let me ask you about the evolution of your live show because I always, again, I try to explain your show to people. I'm telling you this is the one show you need to see, but you are a, a, a one-person show. Okay, let's rewind for one more second. I want people to understand that you have been doing this your whole life, out of the womb, as you said. Mm. You have loved music from day one, and then you started picking up the guitar, doing instruments, and you were doing open mic nights. That's the bit everyone leaves out is everyone jumps to the, the video, which the we'll busking. get to. But it's the open mic nights that you were doing. Would you say like every day of the week, most days of the week? Yeah, and really young as well. So I started playing guitar when I was three. Um, I had lessons when I. A lot of people have uh, say that I'm self-taught. I I taught myself everything else around the knowledge that I had on the guitar. I had two really great guitar teachers from the time I was um, eight, seven or eight years old until I was about 14. That's great. Yeah. Okay. And then everything else kind of formed around it because I just thought like if other people can do it, I can do it. Good. Yeah. And I think everyone should have that mentality as well because we're actually all completely adaptable and capable. It's literally about attention mm -hmm. and passion. So I believe if I wanted to be a doctor, I could. 
but I'm not fucking passionate about it. Right. And I didn't want to spend more than one second in the classroom than I had to. I was not passionate in that area. Right. And it's like when people say, you know, I wish I could play like you. You actually can. It's it's practice. It's you're just devoting so much time to that craft. Yeah. We all start off shit. Right. Terrible. How do you find the time to dedicate yourself to each instrument? I mean, it's 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 my lifestyle right. now. So it's just it's just a part of a part of it. And then, and things get more attention than others and then I kind of like put them down or come back to them. I can have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the guitar as well. Like if I think that I'm playing like shit, like oh, that fucks me up. Like if I think I'm being sloppy and I'm really? just like, oh, sort it out. Like, you Do you have any guitar me. heroes? Is there anyone you look to musically who um, really inspires you? I really you? like Matteo Sazzato. Mm-hmm. He's a phenomenal guitarist. It's that, There is some serious style going on there. Um, and I love John Mayer as yeah. well. I don't specifically have any type of favourite anything. I am inspired by sound, mm-hmm. so it's not – but I think that's maybe why I didn't fit in a genre. It's right. kind of a little collection, collage of all the things that move me. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are worldly and they are like hip-hop and they are funk and they are soul. A little bit of everything. Yeah. It really is. Your yeah. music is – you cannot describe it. You cannot describe it sonically. It's Thanks. your own. In fact, I can't even think of like artists. Oh, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I really do believe your music is truly your own. And to think that you were doing open mic nights, you were busking. Yeah, I mean, I was doing open mic nights first. My dad literally, rain, hail or shine, took me Aww. and I had a fake ID so that I'd get into all these places and we just like kept that on lock and we just did all these things. And then it wasn't until I finished school that I started busking because my mum was like, get a job. Mm-hmm. And I had no fucking experience doing anything other than playing Fine. guitar. So I, my resume looked like shit and I handed that out and I got rejected from literally every single place that I applied for. I did two shifts at a cutlery fucking uh, convention thing <laughs> at the Melbourne <laughs> showground being the water pourer. Mate, people were hydrated that night <laughs> from me. I was asked not to come back. (laughs) No one was thirsty. I thought people were thirsty. They're not. (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, I just fucked it up. And it's good because it was shit anyway. And also I don't – and for other people that do that, that's that's cool and that's fine. It's to their own. I was shit at it. Right, right. You were not passionate about it. No. But then your life did change, of course, with the viral video of your performance of Jungle, yeah. which got like a million views in days and now has over 40 million or I've, I've lost count. I think it's 200 and something. Oh, oh is it? Oh, okay. Mm. So it's hundreds of millions of plays. And I remember I saw that for the first time. And I think what the appeal is, is that, of course, having that platform is so helpful and I want to hear how that changed for you. But it was just a platform to show showcase your unique talent. I think that's why people gravitated towards it because it was you were such again one of a kind talent artist, visionary, and sound. No, I'd never heard anything like this before. I'm like, wait a second, this person's doing this all on their own. Like I was even confused by like the loops yeah, and all of that. So I find it so funny about this jungle video because it sounds terrible <laughs> and it's pretty shit. Like. And I mean, that was the best I could do at, at the that time. time. Right. That's what I had. Yeah. You know, I didn't have any fancy recording equipment. I didn't even really know what I was doing in terms of that at that point either. It was literally mostly camera audio, a little RC32 uh, track looper, and just a whole lot of like made up signal flow configuration that I just did and like I, I'm i really grateful for what Jungle has done for my career but I am not that, right? you know. Right. It's a part of the story. Of course. And I have so much more to say that it, I find it, I appreciate that that has been a song for a point in time for people that they love and, yeah. it, and, it, and it introduced me to it. Was it. An it was an introduction. It was an introduction. Yeah, and I just... Yeah, it's. But there's a whole other book to read. There's so much to read. Right. Exactly. I've lived so much life in my 27 young years 
which is nuts because I feel fucking old, but I'm not. I just like, whoa. If I don't, you've done a lot. If I don't get my you nine do a lot. at nine, if I don't get nine hours sleep, I'm fucking rat shit. Really? Oh, fuck so yeah. So do you have a certain like regimen and ritual you do to I make I like sure- to keep my body in a rhythm. Uh-huh. So same bedtime, same wake up time. Same. And I eat at the same time every day. Really? So I usually do 10, 2, and 6, and then I don't eat past that time. Oh, wow. Okay, now what about touring with time zones, which you well, do? you adjust it to that time zone that you're okay. in. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and how long have you been doing this for? And does your ages. wife do it too? Nah, she's she gets hangry. <laughs> and fuck, you don't want that. <laughs> it's in everyone's best interest that she eats whenever she wants. Oh, I'm the cook. Yeah. Okay. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm the cook. Yeah. What do you cook? Everything. Wow. Anything. Love it. Do you have a, like a special dish that you do? Yeah, I've been doing this um, vegan. I've been perfecting this vegan bolognese. And I'll tell you, I didn't, I had, my mum ate it the, the other night and I didn't tell her that there was no meat in it. She had no idea. No idea. No. That's yeah. interesting. I didn't realize that you cook. I Yeah, I do. Oh like, my I, God. I've got to do something, you know, like something more than just having a jam because sometimes she's just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I post that shit. I know. It's so funny. It's so funny. And like, you know, everyone's seeing like a small section of it. You're not seeing the hours of me poking. It's so funny. I laugh so much at myself. That is incredible. Like I just have the best time anyway. Oh, my God. Back to the music stuff. Yeah, I've got a lot more to say than Jungle and, like, I appreciate what it's done for me mm-hmm. 100%. But, like, um, when people say, oh, yeah, it's my favourite song, it's kind of like, really? Well, it's almost like not doing you, like, it's almost a disservice because, like, like we said, it's like it's like opening a book and reading the first chapter and being like, I love this. It's and not then even stop the reading. chapter. It's literally the front page. It's a front page. Yeah. It's the forward. Yeah. Your live show is something to be... To, to, you need to understand it to see it. That's why I just tell people. And to think about, you know, stats like you sold out Red Rocks in under five minutes. Mm. I mean, I'm sure things like that really mean a lot to you. Yeah, to they know do. That I'm sure that means so much. Like you have sold out shows all around the world. Yes. And tell me what it's like touring. I, mean, I must be grueling because you don't you have like a pre-show ritual that you have to do? Yeah, and I don't find it, it. That's just part of the day. Like I think it. All living like that just becomes part of the day. Like mm-hmm. you are at home doing your nine to five. Right. That's your flow. So for me, having all these little things that I do in the day, that's that's my daily ritual. That's right. my flow. So like I wake at the same time, I eat at the same time, and I do all my other things at the same time before yeah. I go on stage. So I call it lockdown. It was called that before the lockdown. lockdown. <laughs> but right. Yeah, so pretty much it's just my prep time before getting on stage and I have a shower and I usually have a cold shower, so the coldest it will go. Um, that's really helpful when you feel sorry for yourself. It's just, wow, you just wake that's up. humbling. Um, and then I just like steam and do light therapy and I do meditation and I stretch a lot before I go on. Because, oh, I've seen your shows. You need to. I need to stretch. <laughs> I mean, you are so nimble. If I were to choose one word for you, it is nimble. You are all over the stage. Yeah, I, like, I used to be more all over the stage, I think, when I was younger. But I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't think I am as all over as I was. The songs are a bit different right, now. Right, right, so right. Sometimes I can't be. Like that, but I still get it. Uh, you know, I still still go over. You're there. like airborne and like buoyant. Like you were like springing, like a like a like a pixie almost. Just yeah, like hopping and like looping through. I mean, it's like I wear unbe- shoes now. You do? Mm. Oh, that's a big change. Yeah, like there was no like it's, there's a point where you have enough glass in your foot. That you right, need to right, like right. Yeah, s- s- sort it out before you fucking slice a main artery. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and like stepping on ciggies and shit. Yeah, no, and not really. Realizing until literally after holding my foot up and going, fuck, there's a dart in it. Oh my- Siggy, Siggy, we right, call right, them right, darts. Right. Just like, ew. Yeah, I'm glad you're wearing the shoes now. So anyway, I move. wear shoes now. That's the move. Specifically wear New Balance shoes. But um, yeah, like, I don't know, like life, life is hopefully long. But I'm enjoying it every single bit of it, like uh. where, like when it's hectic and when it's not. And I feel like I've finally gotten myself to a point now where I feel as though I can navigate 
whatever obstacle without kind of combusting. That's incredible. Because I have combusted many times swimming in all this shit. Mm-hmm. And I think parts of you just die during those times. Like mm-hmm. when you say, you know, I, I don't want to be like this. I want to be how I was a year ago. I was better looking. I was fitter. I was happier. And 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 you kind of got to mourn that because it's dead. It's gone. Right. It's, it's what it was, not what it is. And I just feel like every time you fall off the horse, the aim is not to be who you were, were. Is, is to be better than who you were. I love that. Yeah. You've said before that you don't compare yourself to anyone. No, it's toxic. Right. And that's a big thing for you. Yeah. How did you get to that mind space? I mean, I slip in, slip back and forth from it, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. You know, it's a practice. Well, you're human. Yep, I'm human. Yeah. It's a practice to not compare because you just can't. Yeah. We're all just born in different plat- on different platforms, different upbringings, different parts of the world. You know, I, I feel like Australians have to work really fucking hard to break outside of Australia. Mm-hmm. So when people from overseas know who Aussies are, let me tell you, they've worked so hard for that, oh, so hard. Yeah. And it makes me really proud when I'm hanging out with people and they're like, oh, you know this Aussie artist, blah, 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 or you know this Aussie band, da, da, da. And it's just like, yes, I do, and I'm so glad that you do as well. Because oh. really I was talking about this. Everyone outside of America knows what the fuck is happening in America, but right. it's not quite the other way no, around it's not. all the time. What I mean by that is in terms of musicians um, carrying over here and, and yeah. being in the know, like that that takes a lot of work and it's changed um, significantly in the last few years and I'm happy to be one of those people who has this really blessed career mm-hmm. um, of just doing all these mega numbers all around the world Amazing. with literally fuck all radio play. I'm also an independent artist right? as well. An independent artist with no radio play and can sell out American venues in minutes. You know world what I mean? Venues. World venues. Exactly. World yeah. venues. Don't know where all these people come from. It's unbelievable. But they come and they've consistently come every single time. So I don't really know what more there is to ask it, because – like there's things in your career that are unattainable and I think for me, like we were saying before, Grammys and awards Mm -hmm. and um, all those industry nods um, as usually what's on everyone's list. They want a number one billboard, blah, Mm -hmm, blah. The stats. Um, And we've all tried to do it and it doesn't make me happy and it's not me. Right. It could happen, and that's cool, but that's not what drives you. I'm not going to be driven by that because the, what is the point? It's a very shallow, for me, that's a really shallow way to carve out your career right. is by saying, I'm going to be the number one and I am going to be the best. Fuck off. Like, why <laughs> is that the metric, right? Why? What does drive you? Being the best to me. Oh. Yes. And I and I surround myself with people that are also very much like that. Mm-hmm. It's not a race unless you're literally having a physical race, right. competition. Right. So don't measure it as a competition because we're all going to hit different goals at different times. And for a long time I saw all my peers getting all these amazing accolades that I, I wished that were happening for me and they weren't, but they did. But just not at that time right? because it wasn't my time for that. Mm-hmm. And like I think if you're doing th- – oh, no, not I think. I know that if you're doing things from the right place for the right purpose, that will be fulfilling. Do you feel successful? I do now and I don't measure that in terms of the things that I have. I'm very blessed with the things that I've got, you know, mm-hmm. having properties right. and the cars and all that stuff. Yeah. Cool. When you have a fucking mental breakdown, that just, she doesn't mean fucking nothing. And right. I remember specifically saying to my my wife, I would give away all of these things and this wealth that I have to never feel this way right. ever of again. Course. So it's a really humbling and grounding experience that money cannot buy. Health is wealth. 
It is wealth. Yes, it that is. That is actually what I spend my money on is my health. Right. You Good. Know? It's yeah. the most valuable investment. Doing weird shit. I haven't shoved anything up my ass yet, <laughs> but it'll happen. <laughs> never say never. No. You never know. It's just what's it all for, you know? Like, right. What, it, what is it all for when you've got everything that you need and everything that you've wanted? What's it all for? So, yeah, we're doing some big behind the scenes stuff to put forward all these things like um i won't get into it but uh, my wife and i are actually starting a charity so that's amazing yeah yeah i'd like, love to I hear just about think that if you're at a point a global point like this and you're not giving back like what are you doing you can't it cannot all be take 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 mm -hmm. tell me about this charity oh, i can't, you can't talk no, about it yet. okay i, I can't but talk about wonderful. it yet okay and the reason i don't want to talk about it yet is because i don't want it to be one of these things where it's like oh look what i'm doing right and it's not fully. You just want to do the work. I want to do the work yeah. and have it fully established before I tell everyone what's going on. Well, keep me posted. That's really, really yeah. exciting to hear. I do want to talk about Lonely Lands Records because it's so important that people understand that you actually put out your own music yes. through your own record label. Again, yes. back to that DIY work ethic. Yeah. Why is that so important to you? Because um, it's mine. Mm -hmm. I'm territorial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like, control. I like yeah. to have control. I like to have control, but I've loosened my control a bit, actually. I'm taking a seat back out of, out of the control. That's a big move. I'm watching what's going on. I'm involved and invested in what is going on, but I have a, a wonderful team where I don't need to be you know, looking over. Isn't that the key to find the right people? Whether that's a family, like surrounding yourself yeah. with the right people, whether it's a work endeavor or just a, a mental health endeavor. Yeah. I mean, when you find the right people, you got to hold yeah. them close. I'm, I feel really grateful because I, I have an amazing team. Mm -hmm. No one knows how, you know, how big an operation is for a global artist. Yes. It takes so many fucking people. It's right. It's huge. It's huge. Like you've got production managers and tour managers and assistants and then you've got all of your live crew yeah. and you've got usually labels involved with that and promoters involved with that and agents involved with that as well as merch companies involved of with that and sponsors involved with that. Yeah. Like the moving parts to get things done is absolutely massive. So overseeing all of that is exhausting. It's exhausting. And um, the reason I did that is because uh, for a long time I didn't felt like it was looked after how it needed to be. Mm -hmm. But the team now is the best it's ever been. It is locked. Like That's amazing. We're locked. Management locked. Everything locked. Crews locked. It's all fucking locked in and it's good. And I'll enjoy this period of harmony because life changes. Aww. So for right now it's fantastic. And it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, like I never worry for one second when I step on stage that my crew haven't nailed everything that is Oh, that's incredible. Now. What a feeling. It's great. That's I don't great. worry about them. They just, they kill it. They are artists in what they do. Of and course. I think people don't talk about their crew enough. What mm -hmm. I do is not possible without them. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying before, you need to see the show. Yes. To get it. Yes. Well, we built that show together. Um, and you literally built, built like it. the and actually like the machine itself. Yeah. Like, didn't you build like built this for like it. two years? It took you to yeah. take yeah yeah like creating like loop machine or whatever. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm talking in layman's terms, but like yeah. what, like you actually built we the built gear. it. We built it's all of it. It's all custom. We built all of it. It wow. only operates from specifically to me. Like wow. Um, if someone else were to get up there and use it, it wouldn't work because it's my workflow. Right. And like we're really proud of that. So when you're seeing a show, like it is DIY, we did all of that. You did. Yeah. Do you like to see other artists play? Like how are like, yeah. you? Like you're such a unique show that's so unique it's unlike anything else who do you like to see as a fan i love to see people that you can tell really want to be there mm -hmm. i hate seeing copying i say i say it's not flattering do you have was there a favorite show you've seen or a favorite artist that you love to see um krungbin I'm, I'm, I'm hoping i'm saying this name right because it's a fucking tongue twister they played in at the City Meyer Music Bowl in Melbourne not long ago, and I just thought that that was just such a cool show. Yeah, like everyone was just really vibing to it, and it was super relaxed and really, really tight. Anderson Park, every oh, yeah. yeah, incredible, so cool. incredible show. 
That's amazing. Incredible show. Incredible show. He re- yeah. He's but strong. I like to go and see artists that no one knows. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, I really like to do that. I still do that now. I'll still go to a bar or a pub mm-hmm. and go and see that type of music. I love that too. Mm. It's like discovering something really special yeah. and raw. I love that as well. So you are a global artist. You can sell out venues around the world in minutes. You are happy. You are married. What What is next for you? What is on your bucket list? What do you hope to do? Um, I'm enjoying now mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. I'm just coasting along with that. I've got new music coming out, obviously. Let's talk about we that. We all have music coming out. <laughs> well, let's talk about it because so I've heard one song so far. And so this is going to be an EP. Mm-hmm. So tell us about the timeline of this. This is very exciting. And what inspired this? I mean, we just do those things, don't we? We just make music mm-hmm. and then we just release it. Yeah. And then we go and tour it. And then we'll do it again and again. <laughs> it's and part again. of your rhythm. It's just it's life. Just, just part so, of your rhythm. Yes, yeah, so I have a new song coming out. It's called James Dean. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. I don't like to give away too much of the music because I like to leave art up Let to people hear everybody it and, else. Right. But it's a lot of what we were talking about. Yeah, like completely exiling and culling toxic people mm-hmm. that were in your orbit that are not your friends. They could be disguised that way, mm. but they're not. Duplicitous people, mm. very dangerous. They're not around me anymore, but we've all had them. Mm-hmm. And we're not all compatible people. Right. We're just not. We're not. Like some people really love me and I really appreciate that. But some people fucking hate me. And you know what? I don't even know you. Right. And I don't care either because we're probably not going to like – Hang out. That's why when you find the good ones, you hold them close. Yeah, and I think like my my friendship group is exactly the same from primary school. That's amazing. Like we we like one of my mates we've been friends since we were five. That's special. I have that too. Mm. I feel very fortunate. Those people, it's like your ride or dies. Yeah, yeah. And they've not like when I come back and see them, we don't talk about touch Sultana world stuff. Right. We're just hanging. You just hang out. Yeah. Yeah. They know the the OG Tash exactly. Which is pretty the same, to be honest. Right. Like I would be having a conversation like this with my mates too, you know. I, you, what do you think has changed about you, if anything, the most? I've stopped giving a fuck. I know what I really care about, but I've just like I'm, re- I'm relaxed into my seat of yeah. life at the moment and it's probably not always going to be that way and it has certainly not always been that way, but um, I really like where I'm at right Love now. Love that. Yeah. There's no better feeling than to be comfortable in your own skin, to prioritize what really matters to you, what serves you, and Mm. to be happy with exactly where you are Mm. in this moment. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Like that's all you can ask for. Yeah. And it's available to everybody. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I love that you said that, you know, it is a cliche, but be present, but it really is the most valuable thing you can do. It's such a cliche. You know, like when you're like having a shit time and people are like, you know, have a glass of water, just be happy. Shut up. <laughs> Don't fucking tell me to just be fucking happy. It's not constructive it's right not now. It's not fucking constructive. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. You'll be right. You know, growing up the way that I did, you know, and that this is what our parents knew at the time and I'm sure a lot of other people in my age group would feel the same way, is that she'll be right. They'll mm-hmm. be right. He'll be right. You'll be right. But I'm fucking not. I'm not all right. At all. I'm not just not all right. I'm not fucking tired. I don't need a nap. I'm unwell. I'm not fucking hungry. Right. I'm just not okay. Right. So don't fucking tell me you'll be right or have a fucking glass of water. Yeah. You know what I mean? You throw that motherfucking glass at the wall. Yeah. Listen. But I feel like it's a different space of listening now for people. Thank God. Thank fuck. I think it's just not stigmatized anymore. And now it's more, it's okay that people can talk that they are unwell and need help. Yeah. It's, it's okay. And, uh, you know, people are more receptive to it. Yeah. Like when I was on tour in America last year, that was the worst time of my life. Really? Yeah. That was the worst time of my life. Dead set. That was the fucking pits. Why? Well, I think it was, it was a lot of unresolved things as well. So, 
um, my partner had quite a bit of a, a health scare, mm. so she couldn't come away with me when we were going on tour at the beginning, and I was really concerned about her because yeah, she's at hard. home doing radiation every day while I'm on the other side of the world. Um, and then because of COVID, there was a big backlog happening with all these all the visas. So I actually started that tour off with out a lot of the crew that I needed. So in one day, the day before the Vegas show, I came up with an entirely brand new show to Oh my goodness. That day. Um oh, that was so fucking stressful. That is stressful. And it took over two weeks for them all to actually get there. So we had to carry on doing all these things without we needed those people. It wasn't functioning. We had Literally, I believe that it is the shittest tour bus that exists in America. <laughs> no. Maybe in the world. It was like a fucking heroin den. Oh, no. It was the in- whole interior was just oh, it was awful. It was like a perfect storm. It was, it was awful. Like- it was not even just that. It was just fully black. It did not work properly. The air con was spitting ice. So if you wanted a fucking drink, you just held your fucking drink oh up to the vent and you had some ice God. in there. It that- caught on fire. It broke down. It's like a house of horrors. So we had no tour bus for a bit as well. So we're flying everywhere while the crew are on another bus oh. and all the trucks are doing their own thing and shit like that. I stopped sleeping because I was so stressed and I was taking um, supplements that Mm -hmm. did not mix with each other Mm. without knowing that they did not mix with each other. So instead of experiencing feeling chill and calm, it was having the complete adverse effect on me. Anxiety. And I was, I fully lost the plot. Like it was the worst anxiety that I'd ever had. And because of that, I stopped sleeping and I spent kind of like the first month of that tour just barely sleeping oh, so like some nights impossible. I didn't sleep at all and other nights I'd kind of not off for like two hours or that type of thing <sighs> and I wasn't eating properly I was so thin like I was just like just a mess and I had developed this panic disorder oh, my so goodness. this like fear of going to sleep it's awful anyone that's but that's been through like extreme insomnia. insomnia it like, is hell. It's hell. It is hell. It's actually hell. I've been there. It's horrific. It's horrific. I wish it on no one. Yeah, it's awful. I agree. So I, I, that's all going on while I'm trying to be on tour <laughs> and pull off all Performing. these fucking shows. An intense show, I may add. Yeah. So yeah. then I started doing therapy like three times a week mm-hmm. with my person back in Australia. Mm-hmm. They just like cleared their schedule and Aww. they were just available all the time. Um, same with my naturopath, same with my doctor. I just tried, tweaked a few things, give it a go. Um, and I got better and my mindset changed and and whatnot. Um, I was quite, quite like agoraphobic mm-hmm. as well. I just, mm-hmm. nothing was working properly in my head you because were I was fucking yeah. exhausted. Well, when you're not sleeping, you can't function as a human being. And let me tell you, Walmart melatonin is fucking wild. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> I have not had that. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Warning. Yeah. Kind of like it. It's okay, nice. good. So then I ended up in hospital at one point because I was at, towards the end of the tour, I, I was so, so sick. Like I just looked terrible and I was like, I actually feel like I'm dying. Like I don't feel sick. Like I feel- It was a cumulative effect. Like it was fucked. Yeah. I felt fucked up. Right. Um, and my stomach was really swollen. So, like, when you'd press on, like, where we, you know, over here, it yeah. was like fucking hard as a rock. Oh, my goodness. And so bloated, so swollen, pants weren't fitting me. And then I started to not be able to stand up straight because I was just the in pain. so much pain. Oh my God. So I'm walking around like this. I don't know how I got through those shows in San Francisco. But after the show, got in the car, ended up in hospital, which is really not something that you want to do in America. This healthcare system's fucked. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it no, is. It, yeah. it is like so it's I, like a whole other thing helpless. you had to deal with. Because the whole time we were in America, we were trying to get a doctor, and no one would see me because of insurance the coverage. And, right, and, and like, right. And I was just like, my God, I just want to know what's going on with me, and no yeah. one can give me any help here. And it made me feel like this is people's everyday struggle in this country. Yes, like, holy shit, this right. is real. At home, mm-hmm. if you need help, you can get you that get help. help. You can get that help, um, and it's. Everyone can access it. Yeah. 
So I end up in the hospital and they're doing all these checks on me and then they come in and they're just like, you have an infection in your liver oh my and God, your gallbladder doesn't gosh. look very good. So we might remove that. And I was just like, whoa, hang on. Yeah. We're not removing any of my organs, organs right. tonight or in here. Yeah. No organ removal happening Can right now. Can I go home? And like, is it going to get any worse for these last two shows. So I had I had two shows left. So I had LA left and I had um another show outside of LA, which I've now forgotten the name of because there's been so many. You were in survival mode anyway. The fact that you even can do these shows is insane. And they're like, yeah, no, you it's not gonna get worse, but there's an issue. And I was just like, so why why the gallbladder? And then he's just, then the doctor comes in and goes, yeah, I'm going to ask somebody else for some advice. And this is at Berkeley um, Hospital mm-hmm. in San Fran. And he talks to another bloke. He comes in, no, we're not actually going to do that. We're going to run some more tests on you, blah, blah, blah. Turns out I didn't even name a fucking gallbladder taken out in the first place. They always try to take that gallbladder out. This Why? happened to me too. I don't want Why that. Why do they want to take that organ out? It doesn't need to go out. Yeah. It's, it's literally I want it. mine I want as well. It. Yeah, like, I'd like to keep it. It's not yours. It's mine. <laughs> it's my gallbladder. And I'm using I'd like to keep it. it, please. Thank you. So um, I got all the documents and I sent them to my my health team back home. At home, yeah. Um, they discharged me from the hospital. Turns out I had hepatitis. Oh, my God. Tash. Which is not – it's hepatitis of the liver. It is not contagious. I do not have it anymore. But no wonder I couldn't fucking think properly. Of course, you were so sick. I was so sick. That's legit. Yeah, I was so, so, so sick. (sighs) And, like, when your gut is out, your mind is out, everything's out, everything was totally out of whack and it took a really, really, really long time to recover from that. Of course, it's traumatic. I was so Physically, sick. emotional. I was vomiting before I went on stage. I couldn't keep oh fucking my God. food down, you know. I'm so sorry you experienced that. Yeah, it was that. awful. That's really awful. It was That's awful. traumatizing. It was awful. But Ugh. it's fine now and, like, it would have been much easier to deal with if I was just at home. Yeah, it's, it's, and it being across the world. I I don't think it would have felt the same way if I was at home. I kind of just would have dealt with it. Mm-hmm. You know, like we all get sick at points in our lives, and some people are like really sick and and they get on with it and they don't complain. And and I find that really kind of inspiring as well. But um, the problem was the fact that I was on tour. So far away from home, yeah. and I had commitments every single night. Yes. You were in an impossible situation, and I, the show just had to go on. Yeah, like we that work ethic of yours, unparalleled. And people don't even know still that that was the reason that a couple of shows got cancelled is because I I physically actually couldn't you were perform. Very ill. Yeah, you were very. Ill. I yeah. did not even know that. Yeah, until this there moment. was a few oh, shows cancelled. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that happened. So for those aye, of you aye, watching aye. this who were coming to the Ohio yeah. and the Kentucky show, that's what happened. Oh, but that won't happen again. But I'll be back. You'll be back, exactly, yeah, always. Yeah, fucking I'll be back. And I think it's a good thing to note as well is like this is my blood. Mm-hmm. It's the revolving door. So I'm going to stop spinning. This is my life. This is what I do. I perform. You are a born performer. I and was, I'm grateful for thank you, you, Tash. You are, like I said, one of a kind. Thanks. Thank you. We do this thing called deep cuts. Just quick, just quick questions and answers. All uh-huh. right. Name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. Um, Mama's Gone, Erica Badu. <sighs> Beautiful. First concert. Kiss. Ah, oh, it's amazing. You and Tom Morello. I love that. No, actually, it was at the Grand Prix in Melbourne, and I would have been about eight, and some dude who was so fucked literally fell and fully collapsed on me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. what a memory! What a memorable like, experience! Yeah. I was like, "Mom, what's wrong with him?" She's like, "Nothing. He's just tired." He's it's excited. Like, obviously, he was fucked. Yeah, and she didn't want to say. It. Uh were you okay? Like I was a grown fine. man I was falling on you. Out. Okay, good, good. A song you wish you wrote. Wandering Eye, Fat Freddy's Drop. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Favorite meal or cuisine? I like Vietnamese food. I do too. That's my favorite. If you were not a musician, what would you be? I would be an athlete. Anything specific that you would play? I would have done martial arts for sure. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I only gave it up because it was hurting my hands. Right. Yeah. That discipline factor. Yeah. I totally see that. I was always yeah. very athletic and still am now. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for fitness? I do 
hot yoga and like yin yoga, uh-huh. but I also do like hit classes. That's and awesome. Pilates, boxing, and I surf every day. You um, do? That's badass. Yeah, I surf that's every day because really cool. I live. I live in of Australia, course, so that's what we do. Um, but I don't. I've done. I don't like reformer Pilates. Yeah, I've I tried don't. it before. It's cool. I get it. I, I get, get it. it. I, I get, get it, it. But I agree. I get it. I get it. And like, I've never been into yoga, even though people think I'm like this hippie, and I'm just not. I really wish I loved it because I think it's great for you. But I, I do personally, love it. I I wish I loved it. Yeah, I I do love it. But everything that we do um, is in hot room. So like, yeah, I all, like the heat. Yeah, so like the hit classes and and the Pilates is like a is a very hot room. Oh wow, yeah, the hit classes. Yeah, it's hardcore. Yeah, oh, it is. Like people is literally hardcore. vomit. Yeah, no, that's that's hardcore for sure. Fucked. What is something your fans would be surprised to learn about you? That I'm not a hippie. <laughs> Like, why is this? I don't know. Why does everyone think you're a hippie? I don't know. People think I'm this, like, really, like, crystal-sucking spiritual (laughs) whatever. (laughs) And if you are, that's fine. Like, I'm not judging anyone on who they are or or whatever. But I'm not. Right. I'm very regimented. I'm very planned. Yeah. I'm very scheduled. I'm very organized. I like to clean live. and I'm really silly, like I'm not serious at all. And so now that I've kind of lifted the blinds on that, because I told you yeah. I don't care yeah. anymore, I've always, some people are like, you know, you, you used to be so much different to that. No, I actually wasn't. I've always been like that. It's just that I didn't choose to show you that side of right. me um, because I didn't want the judgment. And now I don't actually give a shit because there's never not going to be that judgment. So, right. like, you may as well stop wasting your time not being who you actually are and, and people pleasing and making it G rated because I can absolutely assure you that those people over there that you've won over with your people pleasing, these ones over here are fucking hating your people pleasing. Right. So, it's not about the outer. It's about you because I really believe that the same amount of people are going to have the same amount of opinions. Mm -hmm. So you might as well be you and not listen to it at all. And only listen to yourself. Yeah. That's right. I love that. I love that. And I like to take the piss. And I'm Australian and we have really fucking dry humor that people find offensive. I'm sorry if you're offended, but I'm not sorry. Right. Sorry, not sorry. No. What do you hope to achieve next? To be able to continue what I've got going on. Um, and to continue getting in the studio with people that I've really wanted to get in the studio with, which seems to be happening. That's awesome. Um, I'm watching Yellowstone at the moment. Mm-hmm. I want a horse ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. I bet you'd be so good. You'd be a natural. I don't know. I In my year seven camp, I rode a horse and its name was Bullet and I still remember it because it fucking bit me. Oh, no. So I was obviously the problem. That's a little traumatic. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I just want to have I just want to have good, clear, conscious time with people that's meaningful and also fun, you know. Yeah. Um, family is really important to me. So um, that, looking after my health and hanging out with everyone I love and my dogs and stuff like that, there's – unless you have meaning – unless you create meaning in your life – I don't really know why we exist. Mm -hmm. We are just a product of evolution, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like we're not actually necessary to the world. It would function without us. That's right. Probably even better. It would go on. We are just a species. The world is going to go on. You may as well enjoy your own world while you're here. We're just a species who have created this life and all these fucking rules just throughout our economic e- mm-hmm. evolution our social evolution so yeah i life is what you want it to be it's what you make it it really is just yeah. that it's all perspective tash thank you so much thanks i can't wait to hear the new music mm. and i hear more about your charity mm-hmm. so please keep me posted i'm excited to talk about it but it's not quite ready well whenever you're ready i'm ready yeah. thank you it's the best 
Tash Sultana is a force and will be one of the best live shows you will ever see. I am telling you. Check the tour dates and make sure you don't miss it. It is now time for my sound advice, new music you need to know. You can find all of these on the Allison Hagendorf Show playlist. The link to that is below in the show notes and on allisonhagendorf.com. Now, we must honor our amazing guest, Tash Sultana, by playing their latest song. Tash is the epitome of DIY and has always produced, written, and played every single instrument you hear. Their new song will be part of Tash's upcoming EP, which will be released through their own label, of course, because Tash does it all. Keep that in mind when you are hearing this new song, which is about understanding who your true friends are. Check out the latest from Tash Sultana, James Dean. Next up is a collaboration between two artists I love, New York band Oxymorons featuring singer-songwriter-producer Troy Irons. This warms my heart because these are two artists I love and have supported, and they have connected for this powerful new song. The band says, whether you've struggled in the past or are struggling right now, we hope this song helps you feel seen and plays a role in helping you not struggle in the future. Check out Oxymorons featuring Troy Irons with Last Call. Next on my sound advice is the Brighton Quartet, Black Honey. By the way, it turns out I love pretty much every band out of Brighton. We're talking Royal Blood, Architects, Yannicka, The Kooks, the list goes on and on. Random side note, but very interesting about Brighton. Anyway, Black Honey recently put out their third studio album, A Fistful of Peaches, and have been supporting artists like Liam Gallagher and Idols over the past year. Check out all of their songs, but start with Out of My Mind. Also, my sound advice is the latest from Scottish Three Piece, The Excerpts. They just announced their upcoming album called Learning How to Live and Let Go. The band said this album isn't about letting go of one person, relationship, or situation in particular, but it's about learning how to live without feeling like a prisoner in your own skin and learning to let go of the parts that cause you pain. This song took inspiration from 90s influences like Hole and Weezer. And of course, you know I love the screaming part at the end, naturally. Listen to the latest from the excerpts, Jealousy. Also, my sound advice is the latest from Luna Aura. She has been writing songs since she was 14, and influences include Garbage, Gwen Stefani, Nine Inch Nails, and Blur. This song is about taking back what is rightfully yours. It's about celebrating your power. Her EP called The Fiction is out later this year. Listen to the new song from Luna Aura. It's called Moneybag. That's my sound advice this week. You can hear all of these plus more on the Allison Hagendorf Show playlist. The link to that is in the show notes and at allisonhagendorf.com. As always, thank you so much for being part of the Allison Hagendorf Show. New episodes drop every single week. So make sure you follow and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. You can find the show wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can also watch the show on Instagram and YouTube. I would love to hear from you. So please like, comment, rate, review, whatever you're feeling, and reach out to me on socials at Allie Hagendorf. I would love to connect with you. Let me know who I should interview next and what new music I should feature on my sound advice. Thanks again. I'll see you next week. And remember, you're a rock star. (laughs) 